There is a lot of misconceptions around engine braking and coasting. Today, I'm gonna clear them all up. I'm gonna tell you exactly what engine braking is and exactly what coasting is. And we're gonna get out on the road and I'm gonna do an actual test down and back on the exact same route, firstly using just engine braking and secondly, trying to coast as much as possible to see the real world differences in fuel economy with both strategies. If this is not your first Mick Drives Cars video, you should probably subscribe. Let's define these first and then we'll get out on the road. So firstly, engine braking. Engine braking is not, I repeat, is not, please do not do this, you will ruin your car. Engine braking is not using the clutch to slow down the car. If you want to know why you shouldn't do this, go and watch this video and go to the third point in that video. Engine braking is simply being in gear and off the accelerator pedal. When you are engine braking, your engine injects zero fuel. This is different to when you're sitting at idle. When you're sitting at idle, your en engine injects a little bit of fuel to keep the engine ticking over. When your engine braking and you're in gear off the throttle, your engine is using no fuel whatsoever because the motion of the wheels turning is physically turning the engine over and pulling a vacuum where there should be fuel. So engine braking is phenomenal because it's essentially free travel. For the longest time, I thought engine braking was the be all and end all. There's a reason I get 26 miles to the gallon in a 500 horsepower car. I engine brake a lot. Coasting, on the other hand, is when you take the engine out of gear and leave it in neutral. There's two ways you can do this. Way number one is by just pressing the clutch in while you're still in gear. This is still technically coasting because you've disengaged the drivetrain. The second way is to actually put the car in neutral. This is also coasting. Now this is tricky because to keep the engine ticking over, the engine now has to inject a tiny bit of fuel, the same as when it's stationary and on an idle. Now the key to this is when you coast, there is no slowing down of the car. With engine braking, the fact the wheels are driving the engine means you feel a braking force. The more torque your engine has, the more braking force you feel. With coasting, you don't get this. But what that means is you can actually go further because nothing is slowing you down apart from air resistance and friction. So now that you understand the differences, let's get out on the road and do some real world tests to find out which is actually more efficient. And as we go under the bridge, the test begins. I'm gonna try and drive identically in all three tests to give the best example. I'm going to be staying to 70 miles an hour and the big difference maker is going to be the engine braking and the coasting. That's it, my foot is off the gas, we're engine braking and as you can see we're slowing down as we go down the hill. I'm going to take this to the extreme and I'm going to let the car slow down all the way to the bottom of the hill. We'll see just how many miles per gallon we pick up during this. We're up to 30.5 miles per gallon. Pretty good, pretty good going. So we're just about to crest this hill. And as we do, I'm gonna flick us over into neutral and we're gonna coast all the way down this hill and see what a difference it makes in the fuel economy. I actually can't wait to find out because I have a feeling it's gonna be really good. Let's find out, we're in neutral now. Oh, you do still lose some speed. So we seem to have settled at 67 miles an hour. I think that's the balance point between the resistive forces of the air resistance and uh, the weight of the car pushing us down the hill. The hill's got a little bit steeper here. Yep, yeah, we've gained a mile an hour. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, we engine broke all the way down this hill on the first run, so we've coasted all the way down on the second run. I have never seen 33 miles to the gallon in this car. This is ridiculous. A key thing about this video is I'm doing a down and back for engine braking and the same down and back for coasting. So the elevation will level out 
to net zero for the video. I'm going to accentuate this a little bit. I'm going to get up to 75 and I'm just going to throw it into neutral and see if this momentum is actually effective. And then we're going to throw it into neutral once again. There's probably a better way to do this, but I'm just exaggerating it for the purpose of this test. Bloody hell, we're at 35 already. That is a not insignificant difference. There may be some small differences on the two runs because of air resistance with other cars on the road, but there's no way around this. I mean, I can't, I can't make this perfectly scientific. I'm doing the best that I absolutely can. We're once again going downhill. So I'm off the throttle and I'm gonna engine brake all the way up to this roundabout. The test will end when I stop at the roundabout because I don't want uh, the lights, the red lights on the roundabout to affect the test. And now we're in coast mode. The hill is just not steep enough to keep this momentum up. We're gonna coast all the way down to the traffic lights, just as we did in the first run with engine braking. We're gonna see what the final result is. So engine braking down this hill, we're now at 34 miles per gallon. We're still climbing. All right, so that's 34.8 for the first run. 35.3. That is genuinely almost an entire mile per gallon higher. About to start going downhill, so we will get back to our engine braking. I've built up a little bit of speed just as I did on the other run and I'm gonna lift off to go down this hill. The problem is you lose speed very quickly. So you've got to get back on the throttle again because engine braking fundamentally is slowing you down. One more coast down the hill. I've built up enough speed to even allow me to make an overtake. I'm gonna hold that momentum for as long as I can. I mean, I'm still doing 77. It's not slowing down. You cover so much distance when you coast. That was pretty impressive. We went a long way with that coast. And we're gonna engine brake all the way down. It's slowing us down nicely. I'm just starting to help it with the actual brake. And we have achieved 31, 31.4 is the final number. And as we're at the end of the run now, we're gonna coast all the way down this hill and we're gonna see what differences are. I'm just helping it along with the brake now because we do need to stop. There we go, the final number. 33 miles per gallon. That's actually quite impressive. Right then, conclusions. I had a little stop at the side of the road and I reviewed the footage and I crunched the numbers and coasting is consistently one and a half to two MPG better than engine braking, which absolutely shocks me because I'm a big engine braker, but coasting is better now. This was a very specific test on the motorway, mainly around hills and mainly around conserving momentum. I think if I was to redo this test, I would do a second part that included driving like this in town, where I think if you're in a situation like a red light where you have to stop, I do think engine braking is better because you use no fuel on your way to stopping. But if you're in a situation where you can conserve the momentum and continue moving after your maneuver or what, whatever reason it is that you're off the throttle, I think coasting is better. So what I've learned from this is that there are two ways to be off the throttle and they are both useful in different situations. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see some more everyday type tips, Click up here for three advanced driving tips for everyday driving. My name's Mick. I drive cars. Bye.